I want to wrap up with this story right here. First, we'll start with a quote from Tucker Carlson. He said, it's very hard when you're succeeding to see your own flaws. It's very hard because everything about the experience reinforces what you're doing. So I just know, of course, I'm making mistakes. It's just harder to see what they are. I like that quote very much. It's very, uh, it's very humble. It's very self-aware. But it's, it's an interesting part of life that someone can be succeeding, winning in life, succeeding, and be very wrong, morally wrong, factually wrong, and just overall be a very bad person and still succeed. Whatever the, the worldly definition of success is, right? I think a beautiful wife, lots of money, multiple houses, whatever success looks like, a bad person can still have all of that. That's interesting. But the hardest part is that when you are succeeding by even worldly standards, the hardest part is to be self-aware enough and say, oh, wait, that doesn't mean I'm right. And it certainly doesn't mean I'm righteous. Uh, I need, we need to have a course correction here, right? It's hard to do that when you got the money pouring in. It's hard to reflect, hard to take that time. And I'm, I'm grateful that uh, Tucker is aware of that. That's pretty impressive. It's, it's easier to course correct after you've hit rock bottom, right? When you're bankrupt and addicted and on the streets or in the hospital, you can look around, <laughs> you can see things aren't going well. But when things are going well, who's going to be there or what's going to be there to, to slap you around and say, you're doing it wrong? You're saying, no, it's, what do you mean I'm doing it wrong? Everything's going great. So this is a message to those who are, who are flying high. You might be doing it wrong. That's hard to hear. Interesting to think about. But I got a good rock bottom story. 20 years ago, Robert Van Sumeren, 19 years old, he lived in Michigan, robbed a couple banks. He was sentenced to six years in prison. He said, I was terrified. I thought my life was finished. I felt lost and, and wondered how I'd ever get through it. When he was 18, his parents got divorced moved away his senior year of high school, and, and he had to cope with his own. And he admitted maybe most 18-year-olds could have handled it a little better than he did, uh, but he didn't handle it well. He couch surfed with friends for a while, uh, ended up sleeping in the woods, ended up sleeping beneath a tree in, in a local cemetery, started drinking, then started taking drugs, and then shoplifted, and then robbed a convenience store with a BB gun, and then a couple banks. He got arrested. And in decision, in, in prison, started making good decisions. So he was released after six years, then went to community college, then college, then uh, law school. And 20 years, almost to the day, he was sworn in as a lawyer by the same judge who sentenced him to six years in prison 20 years ago. That's the guy, that's the guy 20 years ago, that's the judge who sentenced him to six years in jail. The new lawyer said he wants to serve the community that he once stole from. 